Greetings, friends. This is Stan Houston once again, the master entrepreneur, what it takes, and uh, the Christian Entrepreneur Network, tcemglobal.org. And we're going to be right here in uh, Studio One on Route 77 in Southern Arizona. We're kind of shut down in the studio, along with obviously most of you in your particular place and space. And we have the opportunity, because we've been preparing for this, that we can use radio and video and a variety of electronic and worldwide means to be in touch with one another. And we'll talk to you more about how we could help you with that as we go through this time. A number of years ago was my real neat opportunity to be introduced to a guy named Steve, and I'll just say that. Steve uh, happened to be one of the top financial advisors in the Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota area. And uh, Steve was a, a very devout man, and uh, most of his uh, clientele came from his own uh, Jewish tradition and community. Though obviously his influence and his clientele uh, were almost worldwide because of his wisdom, his insight, his truth, his goodness, and his incredibly wonderful sense of humor. Steve and I uh, worked together. He uh, admired and respected my coaching. He knew of my deep Christian conviction, and that led to a number of conversations about God and faith and the relationship of all of that, even in the business we do. And I remember one time uh, he uh, <laughs> took off his glasses and said, you know, Stan, uh, you're a better Jew than most Jews I know. <laughs> I took that as a compliment because I know that he took his faith very seriously. And uh, he knew that I took my faith very seriously. And we both knew that there was an incredible complementariness to our faith. That's true. Well, just today, because I get up around 4.30, 5 o'clock every morning, and I take an hour and I say, God, just speak to me. And I kind of shut up for a while and just ask him to speak to me. And that has been a remarkable experience. I've, I hadn't done it quite that intensely before, but I'm doing it much more intensely now. And it has been remarkable the things that show up, <laughs> either even in an email or an idea that comes into my head, uh, a thought, uh, a person. And then I reach out to them afterwards and they say, how did you know I needed to hear from you? Or how did you know that I can use that conversation right now? All of that's been happening more and more. And I got an email from a, another guy named Steve. His name is Steve Pressfield. I, I really don't know him personally. He probably knows a little bit of my name because we've had some correspondence. Uh, he's a writer and a uh, kind of a writing mentor to many people. And I admire the work he does. And what he did is he sent out today, he does what he calls Writing Wednesdays, and uh, he points out things that we could learn and things we could do to be better writers and communicators. And today it came out, and uh, what it was, and if I can just kind of read it to you, he said, uh, Pandemic, a poem by Lynn Unger. And so I want to make sure everybody gets credit for the contribution. Here's what Stephen said. With special thanks to our good friend, Joe Jansen, who sent me this poem and to the website Science and Non-Duality, where it appeared. Here is Pandemic by San Francisco poet Lynn Unger. Here it goes. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel. Cease from buying and selling. Give up just for now. On trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that is clear to us now. Do not reach out your hands, reach out your heart. 
Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, as long as we all shall live. Yes, in many ways I have declared this to be a little bit of what I call a shutdown Sabbath. That the things of the disciplines of the uh, Sabbath, which are very much uh, those who follow that tradition, and particularly in the Jewish tradition, follow it very carefully, there are good things that can come from that. I even remember many years ago that... Uh, Brian Tracy, who was one of the early mentors that I listened to on cassettes. Remember them? And uh, even then, even though he did not necessarily come from a religious point of view, as I could sense, though certainly a man of good wisdom and good heart, and he just simply said, I have learned that uh, on the seventh day, every seven sunsets, I think was the expression he might have used, is you just uh, shut down. You just take the day off. That's what you do. And of course that has been reflected in the, the wisdom of the ages. And in fact, uh, I've been working with a gentleman recently who is very wise in the areas of uh, uh, the Talmud and Torah and trying to put that into a life frame for people. Uh, he's asked me to present a lot of his material because he feels that even though he can write it well, that perhaps I can help him with his presentation. And he points out, you know, that such as tithing and, and charity uh, and observing the Sabbath are a part of what he called the wealth puzzle. That uh, what we oftentimes think of wealth comes from, it doesn't come from that at all. The wealth puzzle is based on our merit and how we do other things in how we live, not in just the financial and business decisions we make. Again, just let that along with me, let it sit on our heads for a while. See what it does. Does it stir our mind? Uh, does it move our spirit? Does it uh, sink to our heart? Does it go from belief to behavior to action to blessing others? Well, those are just a few thoughts for today. I would encourage you now that uh, we are in a situation where most of us have never been before. And perhaps uh, that wonderful word of wisdom that we view the shutdown a little bit like a Sabbath. And uh, we use it you know, to pray, to sing, to be quiet, to reach out, and to uh, try to be connected to others, to ourselves, and most importantly, to the God that in all things you are loved. I'm Stan Houston. I could use your help if you could help us and the TCE and global people right now. As I said the other day, uh, if you could give a tax deductible tip of uh, 2, 5, 10, 25, I would be very, very grateful. And uh, when you do that, uh, reach out and say, Stan, can you help me with this? And you and I can help each other. TCEMglobal.org slash contribute now. And uh, we will be doing uh, these little programs on a daily basis, as God tells us to. Uh, sometimes he just may shut up and be quiet. And if that's what he says, that's what we'll do. But even if we're quiet, we still send love prayers and blessings to all of you. Uh, amen. Amen. Bye for now.